Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and Hang 2, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at the Red Dragon M808 Storm RGB Ultra Lightweight Mouse. But is it? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Red Dragon M808 Storm RGB. This has been sent to us kindly by uh, Ugly Bob, as per usual, and this is featuring the PixArt 3327 Pro sensor, which there's a few things about this mouse which are a little bit conflicting. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's go through the rest of the specs. DPI wise, we're going from 100 up to 12,400 DPI, although the sensor itself only has a 6,200 native sensor. So that's a slight concern. Uh, we've got five DPI levels which are automatically switchable. We've also got 1000 Hz polling. We've also got a 90 gram weight. Now, weirdly, it does say on the box that it's 90 gram, which I've measured and confirmed with a scale, but they still call it ultra lightweight. It's 90 grams. I'm a little confused. Anyway, so it's also got a hive design shape. So we've got honeycomb cut out there, which actually makes the mouse, in theory, a lot lighter, but it doesn't obviously seem to be at 90 grams. There's also a snag free cable. Now the cable itself is an absolute dream. It's one of the highlights of this mouse. I'll be completely honest with you. We'll take a look at when we do the unboxing. But yeah, the cable on this is one of those super, super lightweight. It's almost like string or cotton. And yeah, there's basically nothing to it. It's so light, doesn't drag, doesn't scag or anything. I have been using this mouse for a little while, doing some gaming, etc., and using it in just general Windows environment, video editing, that kind of stuff. And I've got to be honest with you, the mouse itself is Bloody excellent. It really is a fantastic mouse. And at the price it is at the moment here on Amazon.co.uk, we can pick them up for less than £25. So £25 for a kind of semi-pro level sensor, gaming in mind, lots of RGB, super, super lightweight cable. Yeah, this ticks an awful lot of boxes. And talking of boxes, we should certainly take this one out of it. So let's get on and do that right now. Packaging wise, as we've seen with other Red Dragon products, it comes in the, uh, the usual kind of plastic container which in itself is pretty cool. And obviously once you're finished with your unboxing process, you can always uh, use this to store other things such as, I don't know, SD card, memory cards, uh, whatever. But So four clasps around the four sides, and then that reveals the mouse itself. And it does look actually pretty cool. I really do like this. They do say actually on the site that it's intended for right-handers, but I'm a left-hander and I find no problem with it whatsoever. There is a plastic, clamshell which keeps things tidy and keeps it also in the box there's the mouse itself which we'll take a closer look at we've also got the storm instruction guide and also there is the red dragon logo badge which you can affix to something should you wish to so looking at the mouse itself and as you can see it's a very very nice design the first thing i noticed when i picked it up is it's heavy it feels heavy it's a 90 gram mouse, and I don't know whether it's because I've been spoiled recently. We've been using things such as the Techware VXO. Also at the moment on my desk, my daily driver, is the Endgame Gear XM1 RGB, I believe it's called. And that is an extremely lightweight mouse. That one is in around about sort of 75 grams. The Techware one is about 65. So this one being 90, it does definitely feel a little bit heavier. And actually that is to its benefit, really. The build quality in the construction, even though there's an absolute ton of holes basically cut out of it, it does feel particularly solid. Now, I have also been using recently the Corsair M55 RGB Pro, which the build quality on that is absolutely shocking. It really is. The sides, when you squeeze them, it creaks like crazy. Whereas this, you have to be pretty darn strong with it to actually make it do any creaking at all. So build quality, even though there's tons of cutouts, actually has worked out really well. Now we have got some extra buttons on this one. So we'll go through the buttons and the layout, etc., and take a look at all that kind of stuff. We will take a look at the software as well a little bit later in the video. So if you want to see how you can program it, what you can do to the buttons, etc., then stay tuned for that one. But in terms of noise and the buttons, so obviously on the front, we've got your usual left and right mouse buttons. So let's do a quick click of those. Now, because this is a kind of unibody construction, the buttons are obviously built into the main frame itself, but it does seem to be quite a nice bit of flex there, so it's not particularly hard to press, and the switches are rated for up to 20 million clicks. They don't actually state on the website or anything what the switches are, whether they're Omrons or whatever the case may be, but they do sound a little bit Omroning, 
Again, you'd think they'd state that if that was the case. When it comes to the center mouse, you've got a nice wheel on there, which is a little bit on the mushy side, if I'm completely honest with you. Being a little bit picky here, the, uh, the click is really nice. It's got a very, very nice precise click, which we do like a lot. And actually, it does sound like it's probably using similar switches. The one thing I don't like really is the actual, the mush between the indentations. It's a little bit on the kind of vague side. So if you like to uh, kind of flick your wheel for scrolling, that sort of thing, it's going to be absolutely great. If in games you like to switch weapons precisely, then you may find that a little bit of a struggle actually finding that notch, especially if you're trying to do it in a hurry. Also, it doesn't take a great deal of weight to actually press that button down when you're scrolling. So it's... Yeah, you could potentially do something else entirely, change accuracy, change aim, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's the top buttons. There's another three buttons here, which also do other things. So you've got a DPI plus and minus, and also the one at the back is your RGB switch or mode switch. So you can press that and cycle through the modes. DPI buttons. Really nice, really nice clicky buttons again. On the side, we've got a couple more buttons. So traditionally your forward and back button. Again, they actually feel quite nice, and I like the fact that they've actually made them different feeling. So the one at the back is kind of shiny and smooth. The one at the front has kind of got a grippy texture on it. And actually using this in CSGO for, I generally, as I've said a million times before, I use these for reload and drop weapons. So reload on the side for my uh, ring finger was, yeah, absolutely fine. It doesn't take a great deal of press to actually make the button go in, but it's enough so you don't accidentally press it if you're quickly kind of twitching from one side to the other so it doesn't accidentally press by mistake so yeah, that's really good we like that a lot on the side we've got a kind of grippy honeycomb shape as well which kind of relates to the top one it is just plastic molded plastic so actually going to be quite easy to keep clean you're not going to have any kind of rubberized bits which are going to get dirty and grubby so nice and easy to clean although it would be considerably more comfortable if it had a rubberized grip on the side but again 25 pounds it's absolutely fine we do have the same thing on the other side as well, so we've got that kind of texture again. It's very similar to the other mice they do. They all tend to have a very kind of similar design ethos to them. So that is it for the honeycomb and the buttons, etc. The honeycomb actually is pretty cool. You can see pretty much all the way through to the desk below or your mouse pad or whatever it is. So yeah, they do seem to have saved a lot of weight on this mouse in terms of what they've actually cut out and removed obviously from the top and the bottom. It's just weird how it still seems really heavy. One thing that doesn't feel very heavy is the cord itself. Now we do have a gold-plated USB connection on the end, which is pretty much the norm these days, but the cable itself, if I quickly unwrap this, it does come with a Velcro wrap, so you can do a little bit of cable management should you wish to, but look at it, it just, it just falls. It's, there's no kind of tension to it at all, and it's got that really, really nice braid in, which is completely scag-free, so no matter what surface it's on, it just kind of just wants to uh, float around on it and there's very little weight to it at all. So you could, if you want to, use a bungee, but I really don't think you'd need to. It's absolutely fine. And I find that it doesn't skag on anything. Even I've used it on an RGB mouse mat, which has got like a, almost like a perforated edge around the outside and doesn't catch or skag on that at all. So if again, you're one of those people who are really twitchy movements with your mouse, this cord is not gonna delay you in any way. So this I think is, like I said at the beginning of the video, the cord itself is probably one of the highlights of the mouse. It does make it feel considerably lighter than it actually physically is, just because there's no drag, no lag, no skag, and all those other words that rhyme also. So that is the, uh, the mouse itself on the top. On the bottom, we've got a mode button, so you can press that to cycle through the different settings. There's five modes or programs available. It does get a little bit confusing in the software. We'll see that a little bit later, but there's the mode and the profiles. They're kind of linked together, bizarrely. So you've got five profiles and five modes, but when you press the mode button, it switches mode and profile. So yeah, it's a little bit confusing how that works. I guess if you don't want to use the software, you could just use that to switch through modes, but there's five available. Like I said on the bottom, we've got the Pixart 3327 Pro sensor, and we've got some nice feet on there, Teflon-based feet. So yeah, front and back, nice, quite. I would like to have seen possibly another one in, in the middle. I think that's something some mice are missing out with. Another, something in the middle just to get a bit more balance especially on slightly more uneven surfaces. That would be kind of nice, but essentially very, very nice. You do have RGB around the outside edges. So you've got an edge around that side and also you've got around that side. So let's plug the mouse in so you can actually see that in action and then we'll go into the software. So now we've got the mouse plugged into the, the PC behind me and I've got the software installed. So 
straight away we've gone into the RGB settings so you can cycle through them with that button on the top we've said before so this is the kind of uh, fade and I'm not sure what that is that is just oh, that's the color flow the color flow is actually very slow so it doesn't actually do it very quickly so you can't really tell what's going on the wheel itself is lit up on both sides which is kind of nice as is obviously both sides of the mouse and yeah it's quite a nice looking RGB setup it's not overly bright but certainly does get the job done one thing I have noticed and you'll probably see this from some of the b-roll which I've already filmed today there is something about the frequency of the LEDs which is a little bit on the flickery side you're probably not seeing exactly as we are seeing it because of the differences in the frame rate of the camera etc etc but certainly if you look at it on the side there is, you can definitely tell there's a little bit of a pulsing going on. When you're looking at it directly face on, it's absolutely fine. And I did notice this a few times when I was gaming. I was moving the mouse and I could just see, it kind of almost feels like it's blurry to the side. So I'm not sure whether you guys will be able to pick it up on camera. Certainly you can do in real life. It's not a deal breaker because it's, it's RGB and ultimately you've probably got your hand covering most of it anyway. But yeah, just thought I'd note it anyway. So cycling wise, yeah, you go through the various options. You've got your unicorn puke or colorful vomit, whatever you want to call it. And then you've got like the reactive, the chase, etc. You can you can change all this in the software should you wish to. This is in the kind of reactive mode. Nope, sorry, that's flash. That's probably the reactive mode. Nope, off. There is a reactive mode anyway. It's definitely in there somewhere. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on. But yeah, overall, I think really it's twenty five pounds. You've got to really put this into context. For twenty five pounds, you get an awful lot for your money there. When you compare it with other comparable devices of a similar sort of price point. I don't know, it's a difficult one. Mice are one of those things where it's always going to be down to the individual because of obviously most people's hands are slightly different. Not everybody's got the same hands, so your grip and your style of gameplay, etc., whether you're left handed, right handed, it's all going to come into it. But I think if you're if you're a business and you're selling these or you're looking to sell a product in your shop which is suitable for pretty much everybody and has got decent specs then this is one of those products which actually ticks the bill, does an extremely good job of everything. It doesn't do anything badly, which is always a good thing. There's nothing on this which is inherently that you think, right, yeah, that sucks. The weight, if anything, is the one thing I think they've kind of over-egged. It isn't an ultra lightweight mouse by any stretch of the imagination. Possibly 10 years ago, five years ago, yes, it would be a lighter weight mouse. But I don't think, personally, the weight of this deserves the ultra lightweight tags. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the software and we'll go through the settings on the mouse so you can see the changes in real time. Okay, so quickly on before we go into the software, just a quick uh, look on amazon.co.uk. So as you can see, there's the Radragon M808 Storm Lightweight Ultra Light Honeycomb Shell. So there's 85 grams there, line is 90. Yeah, it needs to go on a diet. So there you are, there's a price just under 25 pounds for Prime members. And you can get it in white as well, so black or white if you, uh, that should be your thing so yeah plenty of options there great price to be honest with you it is really a great price anyway i digress so let's have a look at the software which is the red dragon game mouse software typically this is windows 11 so it doesn't appear as an app now it just went straight to the taskbar so let's double click on that and there we go so let's move this across and then i can put the actual mouse itself on the other side of the screen so you can see the changes in real time. So when it opens up for the first time, it goes into the Red Agon. I don't know why they call it Red Dragon. There should be two Ds, because there is physically a Red Dragon. So it should be two Ds. Come on, play the game. Anyway, so there is the mouse itself. Uh, you're probably seeing the other one over here somewhere. So lighting is the options we've got here. So when you change the modes, we've got five modes. And when you go through, change all your settings, etc. So I get pretty straightforward there. You've also got options there for plus, remove, load, save, so you can save profiles, all that kind of stuff. So the first mode that you can probably see already is the uh, breathing mode. You can change the colors, obviously. So if you want it to be blue, you can do that. The software does feel a little bit laggy and uploading the settings to the mouse itself does seem a little bit weird. Uh, yeah, it went through green and then it's gone into blue. I'm not sure what is going on there slightly odd anyway so you've got rainbow which is obviously the kind of the default rainbow puke which nope it's gone through i think the first one it comes through when it reloads the colors the green is actually my dpi setting we'll validate that shortly uh, full lighted 
So yeah, that essentially, I guess, is going to be kind of which color you choose. But this software is very laggy. The response times are very, very slow. So yeah, green is my actual setting for my DPI, and then it goes into that kind of uh, pinky color. So yeah, you get the general idea there. So fully lighted, you've got to go without a trace. Apply. I don't know why the brightness is set to halfway. Maybe they should upgrade that to begin with. Or does it actually make a difference? Let's find out. So we're on full brightness now. We've applied the settings. So let's go down to half brightness. And has that made any difference at all? Doesn't appear to. So let's click apply. See if it changes. Mm, no obvious change. Now the camera won't pick it up particularly anyway because it's automatically going to adjust the ISO levels. But to me visually it does appear possibly slightly dimmer. Not a huge amount. So let's go without a trace. We've got reactive. So click on apply there. And it doesn't do anything until you press a button. Press a button, you get a color. You get a general idea. So that's reactive. And then you've got flash. Uh, and that's gonna go through flash colors. How very exciting. This is great content, by the way. So that is the lighting anyway. So you reset all, you can go back to the beginning. I'm going to set it back to, uh, let's go to Wave, which is your default Unicorn Puke, which I generally end up with. Uh, you're going to Customize, so you can customize your buttons. You've got eight programmable buttons on there. Obviously, some of them you don't want to reprogram, like your left and right click, because that would be crazy, but you can change the lift, left and right around the other way. So if you're right-handed or left-handed, you can choose left click to be your right click and right click to be your left click. The thing I do like is the fact that you can change some of the other buttons. So say, for instance, the DPI up and down buttons. If you wanted to, you could basically just set your DPI from the bottom, the mode button, and you could have those as something else. So if you want to, you can have basic things such as cut, copy, paste, which can make use in Windows so much easier. Just right clicking or using one of your buttons, the side buttons four or five, just for copy and paste would be really simple to do. Windows tasks as well, so you've got switch windows, all that sort of stuff. My computer, run, show desktop, lock PC. That can be quite handy if you're uh, watching certain entertainment stuff. You could use the lock PC button for those uh, inappropriate moments. You've got your browser search. Uh, I wonder if there's one for browser erase. No, no browser erase. Sorry, Bob. Not got you covered there, my friend. In advance, you've got single key, combo key. In advance, you've got single key, combo key, fire key, and sniper. Media, usual sort of stuff there. DPI switch, your mode buttons, polling rates, etc. Macro manager, LED mode switch, and button off. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward, but very flexible. I like the fact that you can actually map some of these other things to it. That's pretty handy. In DPI, you've got your five default kind of settings there, which you can configure accordingly anywhere between 100 DPI up to 12,400. And you've got your report rate there, so you can set it to 1,000 hertz, etc., etc. Scroll speed you can adjust, all that kind of stuff. And these you can uh, slide around to your heart's content. Next up, we've got the macros. So again, you can configure your macros, a mouse action, start, you can record, insert delays, etc. etc. So that's all pretty good. You can configure those, just click on add, and you can add in tons of macros. Just keep on going with that. We'll cancel that because that's crazy. But anyway, that's the software. So yeah, let's get back to the review. Okay, so there you go. There's a look at the software and some of the settings you can do. I actually do love the fact that you can use copy and paste and put that onto a mouse button. That is actually very, very handy. Somebody did actually ask in the comments section for the previous mouse from Red Dragon that we reviewed, is that possible? So yes, hopefully that's gonna answer your question. I will put a link to this video on your question so you know the answer. Anyway, to get extra views, eh? Anyway, back to the mouse itself. So. Yeah, to summarize, like I've already said in the video already, it's 25 quid. 25 pounds isn't a great deal of money for a mouse with a relatively decent Pixar sensor, it really isn't. You've got some decent switches in it, or at least they feel decent. They're rated for 20 million clicks, so they should last you a decent amount of time. My only real kind of bone of contention is the fact that they've called this an ultra lightweight. It isn't. It isn't an ultra lightweight mouse. It's lighter than some mice, but these days, Anything between the sort of 90 to maybe 120 grams in terms of mice, we consider to be kind of bloated and overweight. So this just tipping in the scales at 90 grams is kind of just about getting into there. 
if it was the British BMI measurements, yeah, it would be certainly kind of the doctor would be starting to have words and saying, look, you need to look at what you're doing. I personally sometimes like to have a mouse with a little bit of extra girth to it, a little bit of extra weight. In certain things, for accuracy, it does make a lot of sense. For twitchy movement in games, it's not quite as easy and not quite as handy. But I think for most people, this is the kind of perfect middle ground. It isn't lightweight, it isn't a heavyweight, it isn't expensive, it isn't cheap. It just does what it needs to do and does it pretty darn well. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.